literally sitting on the ground in this hotel room. I'm in Vegas, by the way. And I wanted the title of this vlog to just be like, what it's like being the flight leader. But instead, the title of this vlog has to be medical emergencies and what it's like being a flight leader. To be quite honest, I don't have the energy, the mental capacity, any of that to go into all of the detail tonight. It is 11 p.m. and we worked a really long flight from Minneapolis to here with a really long medical emergency. Everything is fine, um, but it just was very draining. So I am going to just get ready for bed and I will come on here later, probably tomorrow morning, and go into detail about what happened in the medical emergency and how today went. And yeah, I just, I've gotta rest. I've gotta get ready for bed and go to sleep because I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired mentally, physically, emotionally. And I'm sitting on the ground in a hotel room, which is disgusting. Don't ever do this, by the way. It's so gross, but that's where I'm at. Just to give you an idea, that's where I'm at. Well, good morning. It's not really the morning. It's 11.58 a.m., so it's basically noon. Um, I had a really slow start this morning. I tried to wake up at 9.30, which would have been like eight hours of sleep or a little more than eight hours sleep because I think I fell asleep around one, but my body was just like, no, I woke up a couple of times throughout the night, which I think just made the whole sleeping experience a little broken. So, and nothing felt great. I woke up feeling puffy, woke up feeling not great. So I needed some essentials, okay? I needed to walk to the Starbucks and I needed, I needed one of these guys and some pretzels. Of course, at the little like hotel convenience store, this is $11 worth of stuff, you know. We get a whole meal somewhere else for that money, but can't do that here. I still plan on trying to go to the gym in a little bit and then coming back, taking a bath, because this hotel that we stay at here in Vegas is known for like everybody takes a bath here. Everyone's like, bring your bath bombs, bring your bubble bath, but like, I don't have any and I totally spaced. I'm a big bath person, but at home, like about five, six months ago, our bath like plug kind of broke and we haven't fixed it yet. So I usually have bath bombs or bubble bars or anything like that from Lush on deck, but I did not this time around. So hence, I do not have any now, but I'm still gonna take a bath because obviously, after that, I'm just going to try to take a nap because we worked that red-eye from Vegas to Cincinnati tonight. It's probably only going to be like a three-hour flight, like takeoff to touchdown. So it's not going to be that long of a flight, which is nice. And then we get in, I think, I don't know the exact timing, but I think we get into Cincinnati around 6 a.m., which our bodies will be like 3 a.m. time. So that's really not that bad and then try and sleep for like eight hours, wake up. And then we only have one leg on go home day, which is really nice, so. Obviously, I'm sure, I'm sure those of you that are watching are very curious about my medical emergency last night. As I said last night when I was talking to the vlog, I did really want this vlog to be what it's like being a flight leader because I am a, or flight leader on this trip, and then I have one day off, and then I have a two day trip where I'm also a. And yeah, I was gonna be like, what it's like being a flight leader? But now I feel like my mind has kind of shifted to this medical emergency. I don't, I obviously won't be giving out like specific details um, for protection of the person involved, but also me. Um, in my job, but I was up front. I had finished service. So with this flight, it's long enough for us to be serving a meal. So I had finished serving the meal. I had finished clearing the trays. I had finished getting everybody drink refills and I was eating my own food <laughs> behind the curtain in the galley, finally taking a break to eat my own food. And somebody says, this man just fell and I turn around whip the curtain open and there's a man 
on the ground in a galley, in my galley, basically near the door. He had passed out. I was able to wake him up and get him to sit up, but he was like completely white in the face and like drenched in sweat. I don't know if you've ever passed out before or fainted, but I have, and I know that one of the reactions when you wake up is you're like drenched in sweat. You're like super sweaty. Or if you've like almost passed out, you'll know that you get like really sweaty and like really hot, like kind of like chill symptoms almost. None of my other flight attendants were near me, they were all in the back. So as I have him pulled up, sitting up, I reach up to grab my phone to call the back of the plane to ask them to grab my medical equipment and as I'm doing that, I'm like trying to hold him, he starts basically like convulsing and passing out again. So I call them, have them bring up my medical equipment and then I PA for medical assistance and put the phone down and like try to pull him up again and by the time I get him up again, I have a doctor or an EMT, I'm not quite sure who this person was, but he was a medical professional. I also had two other people get up. One was a PA, one was a nurse. That is the really nice thing about medical emergencies. Typically on a plane full of almost 200 people, like 190 people, you usually have at least one medical professional on board who can help you. Um, and everything ended up being fine, but we had about two hours left in the flight. The flight from Minneapolis to Vegas is blocked for about four hours, but take off to touchdown, it was about three hours and 42 minutes. So this happened with still two hours left in the flight. And to kind of just like sum it all up and be as brief as possible, he was slowly getting better. He was slowly coming to, he was able to talk to us and have conversations with us, but he was still very sick, we could tell. My medical professional ran all of the tests he needed to do. We checked his heart rate. We checked his blood pressure, we checked his blood oxygen levels. Everything was like okay, except for his heart rate was a little high for a resting heart rate and we kind of came to the conclusion, well not me, but my medical professional came to the conclusion that it was most likely a severe case of dehydration. We talked to our passenger, our sick passenger, and it kind of sounded like they hadn't eaten enough, at, if at all, like he had like like they had like one plate of food. They had one drink, like alcoholic drink, and like not and not any water throughout the day. So we think it was just a severe case of dehydration. Just people watching this video, if you are not a flight attendant or you don't travel very much, something that's very important for you to realize is travel, but most specifically being in a pressurized cabin for hours on end takes a lot out of you physically not just I know it can be very stressful for certain people like travel obviously for flight attendants is just not stressful anymore because it's what we do but for normal passengers that is a very stressful situation but I think people forget about the physicalness that it can take out of you and if you're not like hydrated if you have not eaten if you are not like taking care of yourself in that sense it can genuinely rock your world <laughs> like it can it can mess you up pretty pretty badly so he was fine but he was basically with it was me his friend that he was traveling with my medical professional and then the guy laying on the ground in the first class galley he was literally on the floor for about 90 minutes until we hit initial descent and then we were able to move him into a seat we had some very 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 kind passengers on this flight today okay sorry my memory card ran out so i had to erase some old footage, but we had some very, very, very kind passengers in first class, in general, in the entire aircraft last night. And we had some people that offered to move from that front row of first class toward, like, towards the back so that we could put my medical professional and my sick passenger in those seats. Anyway, but yeah, he was ill for a long time, laying on the ground. We kept giving him water. He probably drank about 10 bottles, like little bottles of water. And yeah, all of that to say, any details I'm not providing, it's everything was sorted. Like, you know, everything was sorted. I had my medical professional, I had, we, we helped him out, but he was, every time we tried to sit him up th during that 90 minutes, uh, he just kept getting sicker. So he just needed to be at the most relaxed state, which is like your body laying down. So that is the reason behind all of that, but I don't, 
like I said, I'm not going to share any more details. I don't want this to affect anyone's job or life. So I'm just trying to give the bare minimum. But I guess the reason I'm sharing this story is there are medical emergencies on board. This is my, I think only my second medical emergency. I had like a medical situation, but it didn't really turn into an emergency. But um, yeah, so this is only my second em medical emergency. And I just want to say like they happen um, unless you're on a tiny plane usually there's at least one medical professional on board who can help you and in training we are trained for how to respond to these situations obviously we're not doctors or nurses well there are some nurses that I've flown with who are nurses and flight attendants but um, you know what I mean like we're not doctors or nurses with those kinds of skills typically but we are prepared for how to respond. Now, we obviously can't treat every situation, but that is what calling out for a doctor or a medical professional is all about. All that to say, everything is fine. He was fine, he was treated. We had emergency medical services meet us at the gate and they ran like an EKG just to check on his heart because his heartbeat was not favorable according to my medical professional. Like he was fine, but he wanted it to be a little lower. And so everything turned out to be fine. That's all, that's all I wanted to say. Other than that, I really like being flight leader. Uh, I like working the front of the cabin. I like working first class because there's a little bit more organization to the job. There is a little bit more structure when it comes to the service. You're also working in a more controlled environment. So I kind of really prefer that. And also you get paid more to work flight leader. Every airline is different. I'm not sure if other airlines pay more. I would assume so, but my airline, they do pay you more when you work first class, when you are flight leader. You also have a lot more responsibilities. You are the, you are basically the controller of that situation. The captain is gonna have final say over everything. They are the president, if you will, of the plane. They are dictator of the plane, if you will. But um, everything that is happening in the cabin, that is, your responsibility essentially you are the one over that so there is a lot of responsibilities tacked onto that so it's not just like oh i like working it's so much fun in first class like you do have a lot of responsibilities however if you enjoy that and you also enjoy first class service then yeah so i swapped into originally this three-day trip that i'm on right now was on my line on my schedule when it came out um, but then eventually I saw the A-line position, the flight leader position open up and I ended up swapping into the flight leader position because it was a two leg, it's a two leg on day one, a one leg on day two and a one leg on day three. So it's a really easy trip and I wanted more pay. I feel like I've been rambling quite a bit, but the last important thing to mention is that apparently a huge rainstorm with very gusty winds is supposed to hit here, Vegas, in about three hours. Now our flight is not till like, I think 11, 11.30 is when our flight takes off or something like that. And pickup time is 10.05 or 10.03 p.m. tonight. So that is 10 hours from now. I'm hoping that nothing happens to our flight tonight. I'm not sure if the winds are gonna be bad enough to start canceling or delaying flights, but I'm hoping that everything goes according to plan. If not, this is a nice enough hotel for me to stay in if I have to stay in an extra day. And I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to my vlogs recently, but I feel like I've been getting very unlucky with being rerouted and divert, not diverted, but like rerouted, canceled, delayed. And I don't know if I just have bad luck or what the case might be, but I will update you if anything changes. I need to heat up my food and carry on with my day. in this shot but um, long story short my camera's like halfway broken and I'm waiting on the screws to come in the mail so I can screw it together so I can't even really see 
my screen. That's besides the point. I'm gonna go work out even though I really don't want to. Like I really just wanna lay in bed. And I just had to do basically two hours of e-learnings for work. Every quarter we have these e-learnings that we have to do and it's literally due in three days. And of course I procrastinated to the last day even though we had two months to do it. So that put me in a bad mood and now I don't wanna go work out but I'm going to because I've been. I apparently need to get my life together because this is the second time today that I ran out of room on my memory card. So I had to delete some. The purpose of the full body shot was to show you that I was wearing a Gymshark set as per usual. So I guess I'll try, I'll try to show you guys again. These are the Vital Seamless 2.0 leggings. This is in like a cherry chocolate brown color. And this is the Bando sports bra in like a light purple color. The lighting in this room is bizarre because it's very blue from the windows, but then the lights in this room are like orangey, fiery red. So I don't know if you can even tell. Let's, let's, I'm gonna get my workout together and go to the gym. You know what I've been wanting to do recently, like a lot, is talk about the makeup I wear for work, like my go-to everyday makeup. But every time I feel like I have to get ready for work, it's either early in the morning in my hotel room or it is late at night. So like the natural lighting is not there. And I, as I'm sitting here doing my makeup, I'm like, oh, this would be a perfect time. And I'm already finished with some of it, so I'm sorry. I am in Cincinnati. I did not vlog anything earlier than this today. We got to our hotel probably around 6.45 and I probably fell asleep by around 7.45 and I slept till about 2.30. I didn't wanna wake up till three though, so I like kept trying to stay asleep till 3 p.m. and then I ended up waking up, so it's fine. It is 5.30 right now, pickup time is in an hour and a half, so I'm just slowly getting ready. I heated up my food, ate my food, and now what I have left to do is just put makeup on, pack up, put my uniform on, and go. But I really love makeup, and if you've been on my channel for a really long time, which I don't know if any of the people that are watching my videos now are the same people that were watching my videos back then. And if you are, hello. But I used to do like only, like exclusively makeup YouTube. So kind of full circle moment. But anyway, I just did my base already. I don't wear foundation or tinted moisturizer or anything like that. I just use, I just spot conceal. I conceal under my eyes and my nose cause that's where like my redness is. And then I spot conceal around my face when it comes to spots and blemishes and all that stuff. And then my favorite powder, I've only powdered my under eyes, but my favorite powder is this Kosas Cloud Set. Um, and so I did that. And now onto one of my favorite parts, which is bronzer. I use a cream bronzer and I've been obsessed with this Refi cream bronzer. I have the shade Sand. Like I've even hit pan 
and I feel like I haven't done that in so long when it comes to makeup because of COVID. Like I obviously wasn't flying during the pandemic. So I um, didn't wear, ever wear makeup for like almost a whole year. I like never wore makeup. So running out of makeup products, it's this is like the first time that's happened in a long time. I'm just going to bronze up my face. And then after I do bronzer, I like will spot conceal again because sometimes, you know, when you're putting on product, it wipes away some of the other products, so. I have been obsessed with the Refi brand in general. I like to use their eyebrow products as well. Um, and I still do use their eyebrow products, but ever since dyeing my hair red, they don't have an auburn shade, and I'm really sad because I love their pencil and how thin it is, their eyebrow pencil, but I'm hoping they come out with like a red or auburn shade sometime in the near future, but anyway. I have three different blushes and I kind of just cycle through these from Refai. The one I wear the most is this shade called Malaya, but these shades are super pretty too. This is peach and citrine. Peach is like the brighter one and citrine is like, it's so funny because the citrine shade looks like it's a dull orange, but it shows up so gorgeous on the skin. So maybe I will use that. Malaya is my like go-to favorite though, but this is when I want to switch it up a little bit. But this is just a refry, refry brush and I like to use this end and I just start dabbing it on. See how it like looks like so dull in the pan, like a dull reddish orange, but it shows up actually super peachy on the skin. I don't know why it does that, but transforms a bit. It's so funny because I used to like exclusively use powder products but I feel like for the last like year or so, I'm like, ugh, powder blush? I can't do powder blush. <laughs> I feel like cream just looks so much better on the skin. And then I'll dab a little bit on my nose for that like sun-kissed look. And then I'll drag it out just a little bit onto the cheeks so that it all blends together. And then my pro tip is after everything is done, I always see if I need more blush, because I like blush. Literally, I feel like putting brows on like changes the whole game. <laughs> I used two Refi products still. I used the Refi, I don't even know what this is called, and there's not really a name on it, but it's like a dip brow kind of thing. One end has the product, and the other end has the brush. It's really kind of nice. But it's in the shade taupe, which is great when you're blonde or like light brown hair, but anyway. And then I use the brow like sculpt. It's like a brow glue, like it is very strong. Like it is stronger than any brow gel I've ever used. And then you brush it through after you put it on your brow. But basically I would use the Refi Brow Pencil before. But now that my hair is red, I'm right now I'm using this Kosas um, Brow Pencil in the shade Soft Brown. It's a little warmer than like a regular brown shade because I'm trying to match my brows to my hair. Okay, I took a quick hiatus because of course I ran out of battery um, and I had to charge it. So I quickly packed up a little bit. I changed into half of my uniform, but I am running out of natural light. And what is the whole point of this? if I don't finish this, because that was what I was waiting for, was to be able to get ready in natural light. But it is 6.08, so we're literally losing that every second I'm here, wasting my time talking. Anyway, Soft Brown is the Kosas brow pencil I was using before when I had my hair red in 2021. So like two years ago. Anyway, so the next step is to add some nose contour. I don't really go that hard. With nose contour, I just like to add a little bit of bronzer down my nose. And yeah, I just use whatever like more neutral toned bronzer I have in my arsenal, which right now is this Charlotte Tilbury, what is it called? Like Film Star Bronze and Glow. And then I like to pretend like I have an Aegeosol, which I can't really describe to you, but it's like, it's like that line. I think it's really popular in Korean beauty. Um, but it's like a line down here beneath your eyes and it just helps define your eyes a little bit more So I like to take that same bronzer with like a thinner angled brush and Draw a fake aegisol because I think it's really flattering on the eyes But I don't go that hard with it and then I just blend it out with the same brush I used to, to do my nose contour Which again isn't even that harsh of nose contour it's literally getting so dark. I can't believe it still looks like it's slightly light in the camera, but anyway, 
when I'm too lazy to put on like a real eyeshadow primer and whatnot, I just put some powder on my lids and then I take this Filmstar Bronze and Go Highlighter. Is that what it's called? Filmstar Bronze and Glow? Something like that, I don't know. And I put a little bit on my lids and highlight my brow. And then my favorite thing to use is the Fenty Beauty. I don't even know if they sell this one anymore, but it's Fenty Beauty Diamond Bomb in the shade Royal Icing. It's like a more rose gold. It's actually like more of a coppery gold, I would say, but it's really pretty. And I swear like, because sometimes in the galley and the planes, you're standing like directly under her lighting and it's not great lighting, but you know what it does do is it makes your, if you have any glitter, on or like highlighter it really makes it pop so i like to add this just because i think it looks pretty and i mainly want this to highlight my inner corner before i do anything else let's highlight i use the charlotte tilbury beauty one beauty light wand highlighter in the shade spotlight and i just do it on my tip of my nose and the top of the bridge i don't like to do it all the way down my nose and then I'm running out of product though. I really need, I need to buy a new one. I do obviously the tops of my cheekbones and then Cupid's bow. And sometimes I add a little bit on the top of my chin because I want to make it look apparently like I just ate a greasy donut. And then at this point, I'm just gonna set my face with some setting spray and put some mascara on. Nothing else special beyond that really. All the natural lighting is gone, like all of it. I know it might seem like there's a little bit of light, but I promise you like it's it's dark out there. I don't know how else to describe it, but my makeup is done. I haven't put my lipstick on or anything yet. I've got about 30-ish minutes before I have to head down and I'm just gonna finish packing and yeah, get ready to go.